Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome to the TJZ Tech Show. Today in this video we're going to be going over how to set up a virtual machine. Okay, so step number one is to go to link number one in the description and that's going to point you to download VirtualBox. And this is a program that I've been using for many, many years now, and it's honestly, in my opinion, the best virtualization software that's out there right now. Number one, it's free, and number two, it offers a whole lot of different features, and it's also extremely stable and very fast. So all you have to do is download the host program for your operating system, and they support Windows, Mac, and Linux. So in my case, for example, I'll be downloading Windows. So go ahead and do that and install it. I'm not going to try to insult your intelligence because I'm pretty sure that you know how to install a program. So once you do that, we're going to take it from there. And once you install VirtualBox and then you open it up, it's going to look something like this, except you won't have these two options on the side. Okay, so step number one for setting up your virtual machine is to get a copy of the installation media. And there's two main ways that you can do this. One is by obtaining an ISO image and the other is by using an actual installed disk. So for this example, I'm actually going to be using an ISO. And what I did was I downloaded Linux Ubuntu or Ubuntu, however you want to pronounce it. And you can do that just by going to ubuntu.com. It's um, a free Linux operating system if you're not familiar with it. However, you can also do this with Mac and Windows operating systems as well. However, you obtain your installation media. I'm not going to judge you whether you uh, downloaded it legally or illegally. That's totally up to you. So what we're going to do to start creating this virtual machine, all you have to do is click new right here. And then you're going to give it a name. For example, me, I'm just going to name it Ubuntu. And once you start typing the name out, it's automatically going to populate the type and version of the operating system. Of course, you can change this manually. Again, they support Microsoft Windows, Linux, a whole bunch of different Linux. They also support Mac, which I haven't tried out yet, so I'm actually curious to see. And uh, you can also select the version. Obviously, I'll be doing Ubuntu, and we'll be doing 64-bit. Now, your memory size right here is your RAM. So usually to be safe what I like to do is bump it up all the way to the edge of the green just to keep it in the safe zone and on my computer that's going to be roughly around 11 gigabytes and for hard disk you want to leave create virtual hard disk now and then at the bottom just click create from here this is going to ask for your file location this is where you're going to specify where the operating system is going to exist on your hard drive so if you want the virtual machine to reside on a different hard drive for example all you have to do is click this folder icon right here and then scroll to the drive that you want it to be located on and i actually have a specific folder i want it to be located in so i'll go to uh, for example my hard disk drive here and then i'll go into my virtual machines right here and this is where i have my other virtual machine so i'll just leave it right here click save and this is how much memory is going to be available to the virtual machine. It's not exactly how much is going to be initially allocated. So to be safe, I would go up to about 80 gigs. And that'll give you a little bit of room to download files and stuff. If you plan on using this virtual machine a lot, you may want to give it just a little bit more. It all depends on how much available space you have on your hard drive. So once you have that selected, just go ahead and click Create. And then if you give it a second, it'll return you back to your list. And here is my new virtual machine right here. All right, now the next step is to begin setting it up, and to do that, you just click on Settings right here. So the first tab it's going to put you in is the General tab up on the left, and this is just a basic overview of the operating system. We don't really have to change too much here. You can encrypt it. I haven't tried it yet, but it's nice to know that's an option. So next is System, and there's really nothing that I like to change on the motherboard. However, if you go over to Processor, you may want to bump your processor cores up as much as you can and as well as the execution cap just leave that at 100 and as far as acceleration goes you want to make sure that both of these are enabled next is display and what i like to do is just jack the video memory up all the way as much as your computer will allow it also supports multiple monitors but for the sake of this video i'm just going to keep it at one and then also i would recommend changing your acceleration to enable 3d and if you're doing Windows, you want to click Enable 2D as well. But since I'm doing Linux, it detects of invalid settings, so I'll just disable this for now. And then you can also remotely capture your display as well as video capture it. Next, we're going to be going into storage here. And in order to install the operating system, this is where you're going to go to have to find the ISO image or the DVD image. So to do that, in my case, I'm going to be doing an ISO. So you just click this disk icon that says Add Optical Drive. And then here you're going to click choose disk and then you're going to want to navigate to where the ISO is. So I have it actually on my desktop. Uh, don't mind the modern warfare there. Just click the ISO and then click open. 
and it might take a couple seconds there but now you can see that I have the install media selected right there and then uh, under audio I really change nothing with this as well as pretty much anything else you can also click share folders here which will allow you to share files between your main computer and your virtual machine but I'm just not gonna worry about that now for the sake of the video so once you have all your settings configured just go ahead and click OK and once it's done saving your settings it will return you back to the main list so you just click on your operating system and then click start now it's gonna pop up a window like this okay now after a little bit of waiting it finally brought me up to the installation wizard and for Linux in this case for example I'm just going to click install Linux and then on the next screen and now it's asking me if it wants to download updates and all that but I'm going to skip that for now and on this screen it's going to be fairly similar to Windows what you want to do is make sure that you erase the whole partition because that will erase only the partition that recreated in the virtual machine and on Windows you may also need to format it in order to install the operating system but once you do that just go ahead and click install and then on this next window here it's going to ask me to confirm so I'll just click continue and again this is pretty much going to be the same on Windows and then select your time zone your keyboard settings you can expand the screen here just in case it cuts off and that did take a little bit of time to process but once you expand it just click continue and then here's where you can type in your name as well as a password and then let's finish the installation so it's going to go ahead and finish the installation once it's done it's also going to prompt you to restart and if you're doing windows it may automatically restart for you and that's where i'm going to continue this video so see you then guys Okay, so I finished the installation and I did a little bit more configuration here. So I'm going to go log into my Ubuntu desktop. So once you reach the desktop, you're pretty much good to go except for obviously running system updates. However, there is still one more step that we need to do and that is installing the VirtualBox guest editions which is going to make operations a lot more smoother. So to do that, we're going to have to mount one more ISO disk that came with VirtualBox. And to do that, we're going to click Devices optical drives and then just click the first IDE primary master and then choose a disk and in this window here you're going to have to locate where you installed VirtualBox for me I selected that on my D drive and program files and then under the Oracle folder this is where you'll find the ISO file and it's called VBox guest editions .iso. just click on that and then click open and then your operating system is automatically going to handle it from there. For Windows, it's going to automatically prompt you to install, and it's going to be the same on Linux. And I actually had that previously mounted, which is why we had that error there, so I'm just going to try to do that one more time here. And then, like I said, on Windows, it's going to ask you to install. However, on Linux, all you have to do is click Run. And then all you have to do is type in your password here, and you're pretty much good to go. Once it's done installing, it's going to prompt you to restart your system, so feel free to do that. Once you do that, go ahead and do your updates, and you are good to go. And that wraps it up for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave any comments or questions or concerns in the comments section below. Feel free to give this video a rating if it helped, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Thanks, guys. Peace out.